Hello, and welcome to my video on building your professional web presence. My name is Ms. Mary Reyes, and I am an educator. In this video, I will talk about why everyone, including you students, should have a professional web presence. So, why would you want to build your own website? Your website gives you a way to give prospective employers, school admissions officers, and peers a strong and professional first impression. Remember, you only have one chance at a first impression. Instead of showing this, wouldn't you rather your search results yield something a little more professional? Your website can help you get a job. A good first impression can increase your chance to get into the college of your choice. As you see on this slide, there's a lot of competition out there for slots in the top universities. You'll want to give yourself every advantage you possibly can when you are applying to a school. You might be saying to yourself, wait a second, I'm not a programmer. How am I going to make a website? Relax, I've got you covered. A simple search of the internet can yield many hits on tools you can use, even if you're not a coder, to build a website. As you can see, there are a lot of results. You can do some investigation if you want to try something different. Most of them can get you where you want to be. They include tools for including text, links, photos, and even to embed HTML. The tool I'm going to show you today is called Weebly. I have an account already, so I just need to log in. I use Google. And there we have it. So let's take a look what my site looks like from the builder portion of the tool. This is the screen where you can build various components of your pages. You can embed code, you can put a map in, a slideshow, you can have videos, texts, titles, pictures. Um, there's quite a number of things you can do. If you really want the good stuff though, you have to pay an upgrade. It's really simple to add new pages or to move around the ones that you have. The menu lists your way around your website. You can find out more about how to use Webly from the Help Center, or there are people out there in the world who like to help noobs out and answer questions about how to use this tool and just about every other tool you can think of. When you first publish your site, Weebly assigns you your own URL. Mine is MsMaryReyes.Weebly.com. For an upcharge, you can buy a more specialized one without the Weebly part in the name. Every website starts out with a home page. Here's my home page. It shows who I am and what my site is about. I'm a big fan of keeping things simple. I just name my purpose and then I have the links to the other places on my site. Since I expect to be looking for a teaching position in the not too distant future, I built my website to give some information about who I am, what I do, what I like, and then to showcase some of my work. In addition to the home page, two critical pages on your site are going to be the About Me, which will go into more detail about who you are, what you do, what you want to accomplish. Here's a short version, and then I click on Read More, and you can see my full uh, philosophy of education and what I'm trying to accomplish in my life and in my career. I also include my, my CV, my resume for download. You just click the download. It was really simple to put this up here. And then I can open it. 
And I'll see here I am. There's my my resume. When people are looking at me and thinking about hiring me, I want to put everything in their reach that they need to help them with that decision. So I have my resume. I also have a contact me button with um, a link to my Twitter handle, my LinkedIn, and another way to email me. You want to make it as easy as possible for people to contact you. So there's another feature in Weebly that makes it really easy to fill out a contact form. So here I've got a page that just says contact me. Um, send a question or comment by filling out the form. There's my email. I also have my LinkedIn, my uh, LinkedIn, my t Twitter, my email, and I also have um, a comment form. Now, if you're trying to stay anonymous and you don't really want to share this information because you're still a student, you can just put the contact in here, and then the person sending you the mail won't get your email address. One way of giving some insight into who you are and what you're about is by having a blog page. A blog page can be a double-edged sword. It's really important to keep it up to date. It would leave a bad impression if your last update was months or years old. So this is what I have on my blog since I'm an educator and I'm thinking about school. I talked about some challenges I had finishing this assignment. Um, I wrote it, an entry about um, a substitute gig that I'm going to have in a couple of weeks. So that's the kind of information I'm sharing. The rest of your website is really up to you. I set mine up for a class I was taking, EDU 776, so I included the assignments that I have for this course. That's everything that I've submitted so far. I also did a Padlet. I included my Twitter feed, so this updates with anything that I tweet. I also have some YouTube videos, and in this case these are YouTube videos, but I could put other videos here, as well as my YouTube channel. Hi. Oh, tired of hearing myself say hello. When you create videos, you can actually embed the HTML to play it directly from your site, or you can include a link into an application such as YouTube. The next section I want to look at is the resource section. This is where I keep my links and information about things I can use in the classroom to help me in my day-to-day. -day. I have quiz links, and I explain which what the quizzes do. I have some video resources, different sites that I can use to find videos to show the students, TeacherTube, TED-Ed, Khan Academy, and then I list some YouTube channels. I also have a link for lesson help, which is really a place for me to go to for sources of information, sources for lesson plans. Um, a lot of these sites will give you things like worksheets or um, videos or just some of them have complete lesson plans and they're, and they're free. There's also something called Teachers Pay Teachers where you can buy lesson plans or worksheets or activities for a relatively low cost and some of them are actually free. The kind of Resources you want to keep at your fingertips are going to vary, of course, with what your purpose of your site is. And the final section I want to look at is my lessons page. Here's my lessons page. I'm using that sort of as a portfolio of my work and also to keep together my lesson plans. I can put them together and share them with other teachers. I can show prospective employers what I'm doing. It's a really handy way uh, to keep 
some of your materials organized. It certainly is way better than file folders in a drawer or a pile of papers on your desk. Here's one lesson plan I put together for mean, median, mode, and range. Since I'm starting out with this just now, I may need to tweak the, the format, but for now I have a section for definitions. In this case, I found definitions online at a really handy site called uh, mathisfun.com. If you're a math teacher, it's a definitely a place you might want to check out. Um, I put some student notes, just a student note page, so that the students can take notes and keep their definitions handy when they're doing their work and when they're studying. I went to a site called MathAids and created a worksheet. Um, MathAids is a really cool site where you can make custom worksheets. The complexity and the range of numbers and stuff you use, that's all up to you. Just input it, press enter, and it makes you a worksheet. And then the other section I have is class project, which is a project that the students will work on to help them learn mean, median, and mode range in, in a real life application. I also added some interactive reinforcement, some specific quizzes and lessons that students can use to either become familiar with the terms, if you want to do it as a flipped classroom kind of thing, or to reinforce what they've already learned. And then I also included videos that have to do with the topic that we're on. Um, I've got some kind of silly ones and a little more academic one. Um, and then there's one that has kind of a song that might help the formulas and such and definitions stick a little better in the head of a junior high student. So to review, the elements you want in your professional website is a home page where you describe who you are, what you're about, what the purpose of your site is, some information about you, and how to contact you. You also may wish to include a blog, a place to house your portfolio of work. In my case, my lessons is where I'm choosing to store my work. And also include tools that you're going to use on a regular basis. You want to make sure that your site is clear, uncluttered, and up to date. Always, always, always up to date. So before I go, I'd like to leave you with a few reminders about safety and security. Be careful. Set your social media posts to private. You really don't want people stumbling upon things that you have posted that you just meant to share with friends. Remember, your digital footprint is forever. It can have lasting impact. Don't ever post anything to an app or website that you wouldn't want your family and future partners to see. Even if you delete an ill-thought-out selfie, it has the potential to lurk and rise to the surface when you least expect it. This can harm your reputation or give employers or school recruiters a reason not to invite you to join them. Don't share address or phone number information. There are a lot of scary and dishonest people out there. You don't want one of them showing up on your doorstep. And remember, your professional website should be all business. Save your clowning for Snapchat. You don't want the first impression you leave to be that you are a buffoon. Thanks for watching. You can find me at my Weebly website at mismaryreyes.weebly.com. Goodbye.